actual title of this video Meloki and Garcia we will cover Lamperti in another video stay tuned good evening ladies and gentlemen boys and girls how are you doing Rafael Tecnica Antica um, now if you survived the last video I made on the history of the different schools of singing and the Italian tradition and uh, when and who and what went wrong you survived that uh, hour basically almost an hour then I believe you're ready for this one in which I will try to be a bit brief again sorry it's the priest inside me thus title of this video Thus the Afondo technique, the Meloki method, follow Garcia and Lamperti. Okay. So in that, that the last video we established that the, the tradition of the old traditional school of singing, Italian, excuse me, school of singing, started back in the sixteenth, seventeenth century with uh, Caccini and uh, Zacconi and then evolve uh, and, uh, and then we, we entered the 19th century and we found these two schools of singing um, well like uh, in Karate Kid right uh, learning Karate from a book two, three. Oh, Karate huh? yeah five Let's six go. seven Learn from books? Eight. Yeah, in a few months at the Y in Newark where I live. Nine. Oh. Ten. Um, I don't, I don't think you can learn singing from a, from a book, nor from a video. However, the concepts that are written, obviously, in these manuals do, in fact, follow that, um, methodology that we find actually well the methodology the Meloki methodology that as I said compiled everything that was available at the time taught uh, to Meloki by um, his teacher Galignani actually has a lot in common if not everything in common with these two schools of singing so let's start with Garcia Okay, and I have highlighted um, the the basically the most remarkable um, things that we find. Now, this book was originally published in 1898, at least this copy, this uh, edition. And actually, the the edition I have actually, excuse me, 1894, 1894, and actually this edition is from. 1911 as we can see here yeah mm, yeah 1911 and uh, as we can find inside the copyright I don't know focus the camera is uh, right here 1894 um, where did I find this book in a very old bookshop in London it cost me eight pounds fifty and it's a jewel I remember I uh, I showed this to McRae and he had it for for a while and he gave it back to me we never talked about it never really talked about it um, so basically if we we go to the preface uh, since the publication of L'Art du Chant the invention of the laryngoscope and uh, 50 years of additional experience have naturally enabled me, Garcia, to acquire many fresh ideas and also to clear up all my pre-existing doubts. The, resu the result of this I now offer to the public in as concise and clear a form as I have found possible. Um, and actually we find here Traité complet de l'art du chant par Manuel Garcia, Paris Brandus and Company, 1840. Now, 
again um, this edition is from 1894 London so the original um, book is in French okay at the beginning we find a, a lot of um, scientific evidence uh, that uh, Garcia discovers through the laryngoscope um, and when we go to actually page 5 on, on this hint on singing we find uh, what are the faults of breathing now I, we don't talk much about breathing we don't talk much about breathing but um, here Garcia says um, the, the greatest faults of breathing are that the breathing should be scanty hurried noisy or drawn in by um, the shoulder by, by raising the shoulders when the air is inhaled gradually and not by jerks, it does not rebound and is retained by the lungs without fatigue. Well, I, as I always tell people when they come and they say, oh, I don't know how to breathe. And I said, well, then, 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 then you'd be dead, right? If you don't know how to breathe. So we don't put that much, em much emphasis, on, uh, emphasis on breathing. If, if you analyze this from a scientific point of view, anatomic, anatomical point of view, and uh, we start thinking about diaphragms, and we refer as the involuntary muscle rather than the um, contraceptive. As you breathe in, your diaphragm slowly expands. It's like an umbrella. And when you exhale, your diaphragm collapses. Now, when you optimize your breathing, basically as if, as if, and this is already an idea, uh, and you feel in from the bottom of your of your lungs, obviously the diaphragm expands and thus um, could I say this um, uh, presses against the viscera and we have that sensation that it protrudes the viscera protrudes and then all of a sudden people start saying that you breathe um, through your stomach hello how can you breathe through your stomach that's physically anatomically impossible but basically you breathe low why because you feel that expansion of the diaphragm which is an involuntary muscle okay so that's exactly what Garcia is saying it's like breathing is a very natural um, thing to do and do not uh, try to complicate it with your I don't know, concepts or ideas okay so let's continue now we find on the page six we find the anatomy of the larynx right here okay and we have some notes in which he describes the cricothyroid and the arytenoid basically when when the crack the cricoid is drawn upwards by the contraction of the cricothyroid muscle acting as shown by the arrows right right there in the in the graphic basically um the, the dot D of the inferior horn of the thyroid marks the ideal center of movement. So what is he referring to? This tilting of the larynx, already Garcia in 1840. And then he, he claims here, when a chord of a musical instrument oscillates, it condenses the air on the side it approaches, leaving behind an amount of expanded air equal to that displaced. These two portions of air, compressed and expanded, are inseparable and uh, form what is called a wave sound. The waves of sound in inverse order are propagated on either side of the core. And if the succession be regular or rhythmic and sufficiently, sufficiently rapid, the form of a musical sound, any regular succession of waves produce, produces only noise. So what is he referring to that later we will see um, we will see in Lamperti that the appoggio is right. He's referring to a musical instrument and comparing that to our instrument, the larynx. So you have opposite forces. What is that appoggio support in the larynx through the vocal cords, vocal folds? All right. And, and then this is the, the marvel of this book is that it's like question and answer. And you have here, can you name any action which is an illustration of this? movement the action of the lips of a horn player uh, you know any any of you that are um, like wind instruments player you would know that the resistance 
to actually blow through and I am not uh, you know I, I played the flute when I was when I was young but um, that is the actually the support for, 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 for these players and then of course that is connected uh, with the body with the breathing mechanism and then the lips so in a way he's referring as these are like the vocal folds all right so we have established that the origin of the sound is the larynx the vocal folds and then later on we'll find out that the main resonator is the pharynx for both schools and the volume of the sound depends on the expansion of the pharynx and of the vestib vestibule of the larynx hello so who is talking about mask here who is talking about that you need these forward resonance to make the, the sound louder not Garcia definitely not Garcia and uh, nor Lamperti okay so he goes on and on and on describing all these concepts with with graphics I certainly recommend this book for some that already have an idea of, of um, the, the mechanisms if you don't just do not read anything because you're gonna get confused and maybe some of you will say yeah what, what you're doing is actually making an interpretation of the concepts described in Garcia according to your own ideas uh, your own methodology or that uh, you know you, you have been taught but perhaps perhaps but what a coincidence what a coincidence that Garcia talks about glottal strokes Garcia talks about pharynx Garcia talks about these muscle systems and uh, well what, what I learn uh, about the Afondo technique and Meloki is exactly the same maybe you know too much of a coincidence page 11 he starts talking about the timbre the, the timbres the colors of the voice and here we get we go we have the the, the concept of chiaroscuro that later on we're gonna find well later on is like actually simultaneously we're gonna find in Lamperti so basically Garcia uh, says the timbre the timbres may be divided into two uh, classes the clear bright or open hello and the dark or closed I, 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 honestly as I read this it's just I'm, I'm listening to McRae explaining this these two opposite qualities are obtained um, principally through the agency of the larynx and the soft palate now when we set this vocal stroke <coughs> ah, ah, immediately go in front of a mirror open your mouth and, and look what happens and you're gonna see how your soft palate immediately shoots up um, either when you are in a, in a low medium register and that's open ah 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 I, can't, I cannot show it to the camera sorry but go in front of the mirror and try it and when you are basically covered in, at the top ah, 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 immediately the um, uh, the soft palate shoots up and the main resonator is the pharynx um, the larynx uh, the larynx rises when the soft palate falls ah 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 collapse totally co total collapse of the of the soft palate and when the larynx falls the soft palate raises the high volt produces the dark timbre so he, here he's talking about the cover the high volt is referring us to the high pitches um the lower arc are the clear ones so basically he's talking about the aperto and the coperto so when you when you get into the the high volt as he says that I'm not gonna talk about vocal registers but you know um, he refers to that we use that dark um, timbre that 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 dark color that is made again in the pharynx okay mm. again 
uh, what exercise will uh, give command over the, the, the colors, the timbres? Well, there you go. Um, he talks about the, the, the Italian vowels, A, E, I, O, and uh, obviously the U, the Italian E and the French U, E. Um, they, they, he explains that they must be dark, otherwise the, their tint would be unpleasant. Unpleasant. E, O. Well, Kraus defended the opposite, and I'm not criticizing the criticizing Kraus, but definitely is not Garcia. Okay. Um, should the mouth be opened wide as a means of attaining power and beauty of sound? 1990, Rome. Garcia, this is a common error. The mouth should be opened by the natural fall of the jaw. Oh, 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 oh. Well, here you go. Why so? Because it is in the pharynx that is found the causation of timbre. Timbres, colors. The facial mouth is but a door through which the voice passes. And again, my students, they know that I always tell them, this is your mouth. This is not your mouth. When you sing, think that this is your mouth. And that's exactly what McCray used to tell me. Well, you do whatever you want. But if you want to actually replicate in a way Garcia's methodology, well, you have it right here. Um, okay, what follows after the preparation above noted? So he's referring us to voice production in the pharynx and what the mouth does. Um, then the neat articulation of the glottis that gives a precise and clean start of a sound. Well, glottal strokes. By imitation, uh, basically, how, how do you acquire that articulation? Actually, I'm not going to read because this is going to get too long. By the imitation of a slight cough or apnea, because when you go. It's that sort of um, not uh, constriction, but that that actually lean against something that closes, uh, zips up the the, the vocal folds, and thus you know creates the phonation, which is later reproduced in the pharynx and later on reproduced somewhere else. But you have to pay attention to that mechanism. Ah, it's a delicate action because it's actually very de delicate action. Perfect intonation. Obviously, we, we work by semitones. And nothing changes all the way uh, to the top. Why should you commence with an open tambo? With, a, with an basically open, yeah? Because in order to render the voice free and strong, your clear tambo is the most efficient, e efficient, efficient actually, with the vowels just indicated. Um, uh, McRae, you gotta go open as high as you can to strengthen the vocal apparatus. Obviously, we're talking about being open, but being deep, not super deep, because you're gonna get hoody. But uh, I remember McRae, every tenor, you 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 had to go open up to a B flat. Then he would take you down. I mean, maybe not every tenor, but at least me. Open up to B flat. Then he would go back to F sharp G, and then you started covering, and then continue up. Garcia. Um, faults in voice production: guttural sounds, nasal sounds, tremolo, and slurring. Eh. Faulty. He claims that consonants are obstacles. Some people use um, nasal consonants to start the sound. Nay, nay, nay. For Garcia, that's an obstacle. Later on, uh, Lamperti is going to say that la, l, it's actually the best setup. And with McRae, la, la, la. 
there was always that la, la before um, sustained phonation during the exercises. That's basically it. This is the whole Garcia concept of singing, which can be summed up in uh, basically laryngeal mechanism, um, the adduction of the folds as the origin of the sound, the tilting of the larynx, which causes basically the dark timbre, the coperto, the oscuro, and then obviously the aperto, which is bright and open. Um, as you ascend, you need that scuro when you are uh, in the, the bottom medium of your voice. There's the chiaro, and then you have the voice. Uh, vocal strokes, glottal strokes, as, uh, sorry, the concept c defined right there, the intensity of the sound. And of course, there is much more to discover in this jewel of a book. Once again, you cannot learn singing or anything pragmatical for that matter through a book. But the concepts, the concepts are right there. All right, that's all for this video. If you liked it, like and subscribe, follow for more information. If you do not agree with this, feel free to comment below. Uh, or if it's not, if it is not helpful, helpful, don't watch it. That's as, as easy as that. Um, if you need any help, well, you know where to find me. Have a great evening. Bye. I'll die!